Fanning the Ember Creating a Life of Joy, Purpose and Abundance. By Ron Schaefer. HTTP colon slash slash www.fanningthimber.com. This book is dedicated to my parents, Ron and Aggie Schaefer. The one thing that has been an unwavering constant in my life has been the unconditional love and support of my parents. No matter what I was experiencing in my life they have guided and supported me every step of the way. Their love and commitment to their children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren is nothing less the amazing. I love and appreciate them more than they can imagine. Learn to start a profitable online business. Start an online business based on your interests and passions for less than $50. Make extra money or build it into a full-time income. Download my free 50-page guide and step-by-step -step video. Go to http colon slash slash www.ronsfreeguide.com. Start planning your business today. Chapter 1. Henry David Thoreau was right. The purpose of this book. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, Most people lead lives of quiet desperation and go to their graves with their music still in them. And unfortunately, he is right. Most people are working at jobs that do not challenge or fulfill them. Such jobs often suck the life and energy out of them. People feel trapped because no matter how much they hate their jobs they have bills to pay and a family to support. Which means they just can't walk away from their jobs. Even those with high paying salaries often are extremely dissatisfied with what they do. Many people struggle financially causing further anxiety, frustration and stress. Try as they might, they don't know how to escape this trap. And all the while, they have this vague feeling deep within them that they were meant for something greater. They just don't know what it is or what to do about it. Life has beaten them up and, running out of energy, they succumb to a life of quiet desperation and go to their grave with their music still in them. Very few people live up to their potential. If this describes you please believe me when I tell you there is a way out of this. There is a way of discovering how to utilize your full potential and to find that greatness that is calling to you no matter how faintly it may be at the moment. This is your birthright and I promise you I will show you how to make the mental shift that is necessary to transform your life, no matter how stuck you seem to be right now. I have been where you are. I went from job to job, even business to business, desperately searching for the path that would lead me to success. My biggest fear was not realizing my potential and having lived a meaningless life. This fear led me to read every self-help book I could get my hands on. I had an insatiable appetite. I was constantly searching for answers, why are some people successful but most are struggling? What creates true happiness? Does my life have a 6 fanning the ember? Purpose? If so, what is it? Should I try and become rich or should I just try and be of service to others? Why don't I feel that passionate about anything? And on and on it went. I was tormented because I couldn't figure out the answers to these questions. I am sure many of you have the same questions and probably one of the reasons you picked up this book. I have literally read hundreds of books and read thousands of articles searching for answers. Not to mention lots of trial and error in real life. It's not that the books I was reading were not great books because they were, but there were still a few key ingredients missing that I couldn't piece together and as a result I continued to feel like I was constantly swimming against the current. I was, and it was wearing me out. It wasn't until I learned to stop chasing success and understood that there was a shift in thinking that was needed along with an inner journey. Once I understood that, my life started to change for the better. I finally learned what my passion was, which developed into a burning desire which was inwardly directed but produced outward results. What a powerful understanding this was. I cannot describe to you the incredible feeling of freedom and lightness and joy this produced. For the first time in my life I was 100% sure of where I was headed. And as I headed in that direction the journey became joyful. 
I am going to say that again because it is the most important sentence in the entire book, the journey became joyful. So take heart, I promise in the chapters that follow I will teach you how to identify the tiny ember that burns faintly within, that inner voice that is calling you to find your greatness. That is the source of your passion and purpose. I will teach you how to identify your ember and how to fan it to make it glow within you and how to turn it into a burning desire that propels you to success and makes you unstoppable. The feeling of struggle will fall away and your path will become crystal clear and you will finally be going with the current to create a life of joy, purpose and abundance. The life you were meant to live. Chapter 2. I read think and grow rich so why wasn't I rich? What the greatest self-help book of all time didn't teach me. Before I explain what I didn't learn from Think and Grow Rich, by Napoleon Hill, I would like to make some comments about this book, which was first published in 1937. A book does not make the best-seller list, sell over 10 million copies, and stay in bookstores continuously for over 70 years without having a powerful message and being an incredible value to people. I am quite confident that this book has helped countless people over the years. Napoleon Hill's work is extraordinary. It is a true classic and deserves every accolade it has received. So what is the problem? How come myself, and many others who have read and studied this book did not get rich? Maybe you have read this book also. Are you rich? I am sure you know people who have read it also. Are they successful? There is a very important missing ingredient that is assumed throughout this book. Those people who had that missing ingredient already, probably benefited immensely from the advice given. But without this very important foundation it becomes very difficult to follow the advice in this book and create success. And so it was with just about every other success book I read. I just wasn't able to put all the pieces together. I had a voracious appetite for success books and read everything I could get my hands on. I was determined to make a success of my life and since I didn't know how to do that I figured these books had the answer. With every book I read I felt like I was getting closer and closer to figuring it all out. As I read I put into practice everything I had learned. I was writing out my goals in detail, I was doing affirmations on a regular basis. I was doing my best to keep a positive mental attitude, I was trying to think big and believe that anything was possible if I put my mind to it. Even though success continued to elude me I felt it was just a matter of persistence and perhaps uncovering a few more secrets. In every book I read the successful people, were all self-employed. So I figured that the only way I was going to be successful was to start my own business. So after months of searching and planning I started a carpet cleaning. 8 Fanning the Ember Business I bought a van, the latest steam cleaning equipment, expensive brochures, the works. And of course I borrowed heavily to pay for everything. But it didn't matter, you have to spend money to make money, right? Besides, the bigger the risk the bigger the reward. That's the way it works, right? You have to take that leap of faith. After all, that's what the books were telling me. In Think and Grow Rich Napoleon Hill gives the example of an ancient Roman general. This general sailed his army to the enemy's shores and when they landed he ordered all the boats burned. Talk about motivation. His men now either had to defeat the enemy or die. They could no longer retreat. What an inspiring story. That was now me. There was no turning back, no retreat. I had to use all my resources, willpower and energy to succeed. I dreamed of having a whole fleet of vans and growing my business nationwide. And, of course, getting rich in the process. Soon, they would be writing books about me and my incredible success story. At least that was my plan. After a few months my enthusiasm was replaced by frustration and eventually despair. I struggled with it for almost two years. I didn't want to give up. After all, wasn't it normal to struggle and be persistent in order to reach the top? After two agonizing years I was forced to close up shop. I was broke, 
had no job, my wife was furious with me and I was seriously confused and depressed. Where did I go wrong? What about all the advice I was studying, boldness has magic in it, what the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve, you can't get the fruit if you don't go out on a limb. What happened? You could argue that I simply did not have any business experience, was not properly prepared or did not put together an adequate plan. And that was certainly true. In fact, I told myself that was the only reason I failed and vowed to not let that happen again. But there was more to it than that. And the reason I know that is because many years later I started another business. But this time I did prepare properly. I spent a year of research and putting together a professional business plan. The idea was good enough and the plan was sound enough to attract an investor. So off I went again. I quit my job and jumped in with both feet. This time I knew I could not fail. After all, not only did I read and study all the right books but this time I planned properly. What could go wrong? Can you feel it coming? This one only lasted a year. My investor pulled out because he was losing too much money and I certainly didn't have the resources or the resolve to continue on. Once again I felt defeated and depressed. And once again, I had no job and no. 9 Fanning the Ember. Income. I was seriously confused. What was I missing? Maybe I just wasn't supposed to be a rich business owner or even self-employed. Answers eluded me. After a few months of licking my wounds and fighting off depression I decided to re-rethink and grow rich. I was trying to figure out where I went wrong. The book made so much sense and was very inspirational so why wasn't it working for me? I must have been reading it with a different set of eyes this time because there it was, right in the very first paragraph of the book. I read it over and over several times and as I did so, an uneasiness came over me. It stated emphatically, you need a definiteness of purpose combined with a burning desire. That was it. I thought my purpose was to get rich. After all that is why I was reading a book called, Think and Grow Rich. But I honestly did not have a burning desire to do so. And I certainly did not have a burning desire to clean carpets. Sure. Like everyone I would love to be rich but there was no burning desire behind it. That was the key. That was the missing ingredient. I didn't have a burning desire. Without that, the rest of the advice in the book wouldn't work. I thought about this for a long time. But no matter what I thought about I realized I just didn't have a burning desire for anything. Now, I was even more confused and depressed than ever. Chapter 3 the turning point. A new definition of success. After feeling utterly defeated and exhausted from the years of struggle, I just gave up. I had nothing left. I didn't care about being wealthy, I didn't care about being successful. I just wanted to have peace of mind, something I haven't had for a very long time. Little did I know at the time but giving up and letting go was exactly what I needed to do. When you learn to stop chasing things, when you give up being outwardly driven, you eliminate mental blocks and become more receptive to what the universe is trying to tell you. This was a turning point for me. My main focus now was to find peace of mind and to be happy. As a result, the books and teachers I attracted were all now taking me in a different direction mentally. I was slowly learning how to let go and stop chasing after things that I thought I needed to be happy. I was learning how to be inwardly directed. And although it would take me another year or two and a few more wrong turns, I finally began to realize the mistakes that I was making. The first thing that I realized was that the people that were happiest were doing something that they were passionate about. That was their driving force. Not money or fame but the pure joy they felt when they were engaged in something they were passionate about. The second thing I realized was that these same people were not only passionate about something but they also felt a deep sense of purpose in their lives which their passion was a part of. My problem was that I really didn't feel that passionate about any one thing and I certainly had no idea what my purpose was or if I even had one. 
A lot of things made me happy or were enjoyable but I didn't feel that burning desire that many books talk about and that I began to see in truly successful people. On an intellectual level I understood what they were saying, follow your bliss, do what you love and the money will follow. But try as I might it just wasn't there for me. I realized that most truly successful people felt a deep sense of purpose in what they did. My problem was that I didn't know what my purpose was or even. 11 Fanning the Ember. If I had a purpose. As a result I never knew which direction to head in and was constantly torn between making money or being of service to others. Not knowing at the time that you can do both very successfully. And because I went back and forth in my mind I was never fully committed to either one and as a result was never effective heading in either direction. I was still outwardly driven. I was constantly chasing something that I was hoping would make me happy. As a result I was fighting an uphill battle which was not only ineffective but incredibly exhausting. I found that I wasn't alone in this. It appears that most people chase after something that they believe will make them happy. I didn't realize it at the time but I needed to change my entire definition of success. If you ask most people to define success it would probably include one or more of the following terms, wealth, fame, power, status, achievement, title, awards. Don't misunderstand me, there is absolutely nothing wrong with any of those things. The problem is that most people are outwardly driven and chase after these things believing that is what they need to be happy or to solve their problems. But we pay a heavy price when we do this. How many people have self-destructed chasing after success? Because you are going against the current when you chase after success it drains your energy and often affects your physical health, your mental health, your relationships and sometimes even your freedom. Some people will lie, cheat or steal to get these things and end up in jail or worse. So how does one become successful without running into these problems? It all starts with a different definition of success. Since people are chasing success because they believe it is what they need to make them happy, let's start there. True happiness comes from doing something that you are passionate about and gives you a deep sense of satisfaction and purpose. There is joy in that and that is what it is all about. Chasing things drains your energy. Doing something that you are passionate about gives you energy and puts you into the flow of life and leads you to inspired action. This is what I mean when I say inwardly directed. Nothing has to be forced. And the nice thing about living a life of joy and purpose is that the things we once chased, fame, wealth, awards, etc. often show up as a result. Not because we went after those things, but as a byproduct of achieving true success. Finally identifying the problem was one thing, figuring out what to do about it was another. Chapter 4 the transformation. Learning to let go. Most of you probably know who David Copperfield is. Certainly people of my generation, those who grew up in the 60s and 70s do. He is one of the most successful entertainers and magicians of the past three decades, and arguably one of the greatest illusionists of all time. I'll talk more about him in a few moments. As a young boy I became interested in the art of magic. I was fascinated by it. It became a lifelong hobby as well as a source of income for me. I still enjoy it and utilize it in my lectures and workshops. Many years after my business fiasco, I had given up on the idea of trying to get rich just for the sake of being wealthy. I was now desperately searching for my purpose in life. A purpose that would also give me peace of mind, something that I hadn't had in a very long time. I had gone to college to become a teacher. But back when I graduated there was a glut of teachers and I couldn't land a permanent teaching position. I didn't realize it at the time but that desire I had to teach and to make a difference in people's lives was my ember. But because I didn't know what to do with it, it faded into the background when faced with an obstacle, in this case, a tough job market. I eventually chose work outside the teaching profession just so I could earn a full-time income. I went from job to job pretty much unfulfilled with whatever I was doing. 
I started doing magic shows on the side to try and earn extra money. The more shows I did the better I got and the more I enjoyed it. In the beginning I mostly did children's and family shows. I did birthday parties, scout banquets, holiday shows, things like that. Nothing was more enjoyable than hearing the laughter and screams of delight from my audience. I got better and better and as my skills grew so did the demand for my shows as well as the money I charged for them. Then it hit me. This must be what the books were talking about, do what? 13 Fanning the Ember. You love and the money will follow. This must be the missing ingredient that I have been searching for. Yes, I would head in this direction. I started rereading all my books on goal setting and success. I set a goal of being able to perform magic full time. I studied books on marketing and sales, and after about a year of preparation I was ready. I took that leap, quit my job, the one I hated anyway, and started performing magic as my only source of income. It may seem as if I had found my passion but as I eventually discovered, there is a big difference between doing something that is enjoyable and fun and doing something that you are passionate about. At first it was great. I had a feeling of accomplishment. I could tell everyone with pride that I made my living as a professional magician. I followed the suggestions of all those success books, had summoned all my willpower and persistence and was now on my way. I felt that I was finally on the right path and would soon skyrocket to success and wealth. You can probably see where this is heading, can't you? It was incredibly exciting dot 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 for about the first six months. And then the reality of trying to pay all my bills, insurance and other expenses set in. But when things got difficult I thought, this is the test. This is the struggle that everyone said was needed to be successful. This is where I need to demonstrate persistence and never, ever give up. Isn't that what all those books were telling me? So I simply worked harder. Translation, struggled more. I frantically tried to think of ways that I could be more successful. I thought maybe if I added large stage illusions into my show I could charge more and be more marketable. I tried developing a show for the corporate market because I heard there was big money in that. I even combined my teaching skills with my magic and started to teach magic and run workshops. I even developed the Learn at Home Magic video series that at one time was distributed nationally for me by Parade Video. I barely made enough money on that to pay for production costs. And on and on it went. Thinking success was just around the corner, just one idea away. Give up when adversity strikes? Not me. Take my eye off the prize? Not me. I would continue to fight the good fight. Can you hear the theme song from the movie, Rocky in the background? I didn't realize it at the time but I had fallen into the same trap of chasing success as before. My frustration continued to mount until it became unbearable. Once again I had to give up and look for the first job I could find. 14 Fanning the Ember All the while I struggled I continued to follow the career of my favorite magician, David Copperfield. The success he achieved was amazing. While still a teen he landed the lead in the Chicago musical, The Magic Man. At 19 he hosted an ABC television magic special. It was so popular that he ended up doing a yearly special for the next decade. He now performs over 500 shows per year and has won 21 Emmy Awards. In 2005, according to Forbes magazine, he earned $57 million. Wow! Talk about being successful. This is the type of success I desperately wanted. While everything I did seemed like an incredible struggle that got me nowhere, he seemed to skyrocket to success almost effortlessly. I couldn't figure this out. What did he have that I didn't have? I mean besides good looks, charisma, talent and a supermodel for a girlfriend. What he had that I didn't is the heart and soul of what this book is all about. He created for himself a life of joy, purpose and abundance. At an early age his passion, that ember, was already glowing so brightly that it captured his imagination so strongly that it is all that he thought about. 
At a young age he was inwardly driven by this passion and you can see the results it produced. He wasn't chasing success like I was. He was following his passion which developed into a burning desire that propelled him to success. He was in the flow of life. Where I was trying to swim against the current and it was wearing me out. Some people are fortunate and identify their passion clearly and at an early age. But what about the rest of us? Most of us don't feel that passionate about anything or if we do, we are not sure what to do about it or lack the belief that we can do anything successful with it. Do we just go on and lead lives of quiet desperation? Not at all. So, what do we do? How do we get into the flow of life? How do we develop a burning desire that propels us to success? This book was written to answer those questions. My personal journey and struggle combined with an insatiable appetite for discovering the answers to all these questions eventually lead me to a personal transformation. I will not only describe how that transformation came about but take you step by step through a process that will allow you to do the same. The first thing I did was I give up trying to chase anything. I knew I had to learn to let go. It wasn't easy because for my entire life I was goal oriented and was constantly trying to achieve something. I didn't pick up one book that mentioned goals, or success or wealth. I started reading books about passion, peace, happiness and letting go. Most of these books talked about the spiritual. 15 Fanning the Ember Side of Life and Taking an Inward Journey I started reading about the power of your subconscious mind and how thoughts attract like thoughts. The more I studied and the more I continued on this inner journey the clearer things became. I started to see clearly all the mistakes I was making. I could see that I was living life in a fog. And it was a fog that I had created for myself. And it was this fog that was keeping me from seeing my true self and my true path. I learned to listen to my intuition, that small voice inside that has all the answers. And soon this fog started to lift and eventually I started to get a glimpse of daylight. And the more daylight I saw the more excited I got because I knew I was finally on the right track. It started to get clearer and clearer and then one day, bam! There I was. The fog was gone. Everything, and I mean everything was clearer. It was an incredible feeling and more importantly, a tremendous relief. For the first time in my life my purpose had become clear. I went to college to be a teacher because I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. As I took this inner journey those feelings came to the surface stronger than ever before. It became clear that helping others discover their potential was what I was passionate about. And as my vision for my future became clearer my life started to change outwardly. Not because I was chasing anything but because I was now following my passion and any action I took was inspired action. The kind that requires no struggle. It took about three months before I noticed any significant outward change. But during those three months there was no waiting impatiently for things to change. The relief I was seeking had already occurred the clarity was already there, and I knew without any doubts that things would eventually change outwardly and that I was headed in the right direction. For one thing a new job opportunity presented itself that was perfect for me. It allowed me to go into high school classrooms and present a program that I created called the Magic of Goal Setting. It was designed to help motivate students to continue their education or training after high school so they could get into a good career. Of course, I used magic to grab their attention and make the message memorable. I loved it and so did the students and teachers. This job also allowed me to work out of my house and gave me the flexibility and freedom to develop the new ideas I had that just flowed from within. I also volunteered my time to work with at-risk high school students to graduate high school and find a path to success. This is something that is very important to me and I continue to do. I also developed a lecture and workshops to present to college students to help them understand how to achieve true success after college regardless of their major. And of course I. 16 Fanning the Ember
utilized my skills as a magician and mentalist to grab their attention, illustrate key points and make the message memorable. Nothing brings me more absolute joy than delivering those messages and feeling the connection I get with the audience. I started to develop workshops to teach others who were frustrated and stuck like I was how to find joy, purpose and abundance in their life. And of course, I eventually put my ideas down on paper that became this book. The ideas for all of these projects just flowed out of me. I didn't have to try and force anything. It poured out because I was aligned with my passion and on the right track. After about a year and a half the life that I once had was almost unrecognizable. And as of this writing things are still changing for me and my future is looking brighter and brighter. So take heart, now that I can see clearly all the mistakes that I have made and what to do about them I am anxious to share this information with others. This inner journey can sometimes seem like a confusing and mysterious one. My goal is to take the mystery out of it and give you a clear step-by-step -step process that you can understand and follow. Your greatness is calling you. No matter how faintly it is right now, it's there. In the chapters that follow I will show you how to identify your passion and your purpose and just as important, I will show you what to do once you have identified it. Eventually that fog will begin to lift and one day in the not so distant future everything will become crystal clear to you. And you will know the absolute joy of living the life you were meant to live. Chapter 5. Identifying the Ember. Finding your passion. Many people understand that passion is the key to being truly successful. Most of us have heard the saying, follow your bliss or do what you love and the money will follow. Well, if most people understand this then why aren't more people successful? The problem is twofold. First, most people do not feel that passionate about anything, or if they do, they don't know what to do about it or lack the belief that they can accomplish great things by following their passion. Before you can develop a burning desire for something you first have to identify that desire. It is my absolute belief that everyone has within them the potential for greatness. Inside everyone is a hint of that passion that can lead to their greatness. I refer to this seed within as a tiny, faintly glowing ember. The purpose of this chapter is to help you identify your ember, that is your passion. I honestly believe you cannot reach your full potential without this important first step. Besides, when you clearly identify your passion you are also identifying your purpose. Know this, your passion is calling to you and searching for a way to express itself. If we knew how to fully trust our intuition we would know this. But our minds are so cluttered with wrong thinking and what we believe are limitations that we forgot how to listen. Even though it may be very faint, most people already have a sense of what their passion is. But unfortunately they have either dismissed, ignored it, smothered it, or long forgot about it, often with help from others. So don't be surprised as I describe this discovery process if you find that you had a sense of your passion all along. Several years ago, in my search to identify my own passion I was drawn to a book called, Listen to Your Life by Valerie Burton. Published by Waterbrook Press, in it were some questions she had her readers ask themselves to help them identify their passion. I found this extremely helpful and have since amended and 18 Fanning the Ember. Added to these questions to help others do the same. The best thing to do is to wait until you can be undisturbed for at least 30 minutes and write down your answers to the following questions. Do not give too much thought to your responses. Use your intuition and answer quickly. Here are the questions. 1. What do you do that gives you a feeling of satisfaction? 2. What makes you feel joyful when you think about it? 3. What do you do that makes you feel strong or successful? 4. What hobbies do you enjoy? 5. What makes you feel invigorated or energized? 6. What things draw your attention? 7. What successful people do you admire and why? 8. What do you love talking with others about? 9. What are your strengths? 10. What talents or abilities do you have?
11. What uplifts, inspires or encourages you? 12. What kind of difference do you want to make in the world? 13. What causes inspire you? 14. If you could be a world famous authority on the subject, what would it be? 15. What lifelong interests have compelled you? 16. What things seem to come naturally for you? 17. What would you do if money, time or circumstances were not an issue? 18. What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Based on your answers what are the recurring themes? Is there one calling to you more than the others? Can you combine two or three of these into one vision that excites you? Your answers to the previous questions will either point out your passion clearly or give you enough clues to figure it out. That is your ember? That is the starting point of your passion and your purpose. When you think about awe. 19 Fanning the Ember. Imagine yourself doing these things you should get a feeling of excitement or strength. This is the sign that you are on the right track. You are going to find that you will come to use your skills, strengths and talents to follow your passion and share it with the world and this will become your purpose. And if you don't feel you have the talent yet to fulfill your purpose, rest assured the potential is there waiting for you to call it out. There is a sign hanging in my office that reminds me of this important message. Discover which way your heart draws you and choose that way with all your strength. You will come to understand that this is your pathway to true success. Chapter 6. Fanning the Ember. Developing a Burning Desire. Pay very close attention because what happens after you have identified your passion is extremely important. Identifying your passion is a necessary first step but what you do from there will determine whether or not you develop that burning desire that is needed to be truly successful or whether that ember stays buried inside and never grows past the ember stage. Once you have identified your source of passion there are several things that I do not want you to do. First, do not judge or qualify your passion and your purpose. Do not say to yourself boy, that is not a very worthy purpose. Or, my family won't approve of that. Or, others won't think much of that. Do not judge or qualify what you feel. If that passion is there within you it is there for a reason. Discover which way your heart draws you and choose that way with all your strength. The second thing that I don't want you to do is to do something rash. If your thought process sounds something like this, yes. I have found my passion, I am going to quit my job, or invest all my money in a new business, or underscore fill in the blank with any rash decision if that is what you are thinking, please stop, stop, stop. Don't misunderstand me, I am not saying that eventually those things might be the right path for you, I'm just saying be sure you are not falling into the trap of chasing something, especially before you are ready. If you read on and continue to do the inner work I am going to explain you will know when it is time to take action. Because it will be inspired action. Action that strongly and clearly calls to you. There won't be that feeling of anxiety or worry associated with it that normally comes from a rash decision. Most steps in the right direction are slow small steps at first until you can see clearly the path ahead. If you are on the right path you will get to where you want to go but you will be enjoying the journey. That is the key. When you have identified your passion and your purpose, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. If the journey isn't joyful then you are not on the right path. If 21 Fanning the Ember You think you won't be happy until you get somewhere else, you are not on the right path. So doing something rash immediately after identifying your passion often leads to trouble. Trust me, I am speaking from experience, painful experience. The last thing I do not want you to do is listen to your conscious mind or your logical mind, which will give you all the reasons why you can't do anything with your passion. Here is what usually happens. You've identified your passion and purpose and a big goal naturally formulates in your mind. It could be a new career idea or a business or any big project that you can associate with your passion. 
you get excited about that and then your conscious mind takes over and says to you, you don't have enough money to do that, you don't have enough experience or education to do that, you don't have enough time to do that, you don't have enough support to do that. And on and on it goes and after listening to this for a while doubts start to creep in and you finally succumb to the barrage and decide it's not possible. You get depressed and bury that ember deep inside and go about living a life of quiet desperation. I am warning you ahead of time that this is likely to happen. Do not worry about that big goal just yet. Just because your mind can't see a path to get there doesn't mean the path doesn't exist. Do not worry about the how just stay focused on the what. Eventually the how will be shown to you. Just focus on your passion for right now. I will explain how to proceed step by step and cause that ember to glow brightly. We cannot achieve true success by listening to our conscious mind. The conscious mind is simply an information gathering device. It gathers information about the world around us through the five senses, particularly our sense of sight. The problem is that the information that it gathers is limited, but it doesn't know that it is limited so it makes a lot of assumptions and it makes a lot of wrong assumptions and if we accept these wrong assumptions as the truth which we usually do, it keeps us from realizing true success. In my lectures I demonstrate this point dramatically by performing magic tricks. I usually do tricks based on magic of the mind or what is usually referred to as mentalism. I do things that people see and swear is impossible. But the fact is that the art of magic is based on the wrong assumptions that the conscious mind makes and the magician does things to reinforce those assumptions and apparently perform the impossible. Because the mind can't see a solution to what the magician does it assumes there is none and labels it impossible or magic or esp or paranormal abilities. 22 Fanning the Ember But as in life just because our mind can't see a solution doesn't mean there is none. The bottom line is that our conscious mind cannot see the limitless possibilities before us, yet we constantly make decisions based on this limited information. You will never discover your passion and purpose, never feel the energy of enthusiasm, or create new things for your future if you rely solely on the information we get from our conscious mind. The real power to create our futures comes from our subconscious minds. That is our link to infinite intelligence. I am talking about your imagination and visualization. It is through this incredible life force we feel as passion and a burning desire flows. All progress, all new inventions, technology, art, music, literature are all the result of this life force that is triggered by the power of our imaginations. That is why Einstein said, the imagination is more important than knowledge. Because he understood this. We are going to use our imaginations to fan our embers, our passion, until it is powerful enough to start generating ideas and fuel us with the energy that is caused by a strong desire. It may be difficult to make this leap of understanding because we are so used to relying on the information gathered by our conscious minds. But bear with me because I will take you step by step through a process which will teach you how to tap into this source where ideas, creativity and passion flow. It will take some work but it will be well worth it. The results will amaze you. And you will come to understand what is meant by the words, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So how do we tap into this power and get our ember to grow? Did you ever fan a tiny glowing ember in a fireplace? What happens? It glows brighter, doesn't it? That is because it is getting what it so desperately needs and that is oxygen. The more oxygen, the more it glows. The way to fan your inner ember and cause it to glow is simply by giving it your thought and attention. Because whatever you consistently give your thought and attention to expands in your consciousness. Let me give you a simple example. Maybe this happened to you the last time you bought a car. Once you decided on what kind of car you wanted, all of a sudden you began to notice them everywhere. Right? It's not that they magically appeared out of nowhere, they were always there, but now you noticed them because you were giving the type of car your thought and attention, dot. And it expanded in your consciousness. 
That is why you have to think about owned. 23 Fanning the Ember Visualize your passion on a daily basis. It expands in your consciousness. You will start noticing things you didn't notice before that can help you accomplish your goals. You will meet new people that can assist you. Opportunities will present themselves that you wouldn't have noticed before. New ideas will pop into your mind. All because you are using the incredible power of your subconscious mind and imagining your passion on a daily basis. This is how you found the ember. Here is the best way to begin this process. Write out and describe in as much detail the following, this is what my passion is. This is what I will be doing. This how it will change my life. This is how it will make me feel. This is how it will impact others. Write it out with as much detail as possible. And then you want to read this on a regular basis and take some time to imagine these things as vividly as possible. If you are on the right track you should feel a sense of excitement and increased energy when you imagine these things. That is your direct connection to the invisible life force within you telling you that you are on the right track, keep heading in that direction. This will cause your ember to glow brightly. Discover which way your heart draws you and choose that way with all your strength. As you begin this process do not let your conscious mind get involved. In other words, do not listen to the limitations it wrongly assumes for you. Do not worry or get frustrated if you cannot see what great things you can accomplish with your passion just yet. Don't worry if you can't see a path to that big goal you have for yourself. There is an old Eskimo saying that asks, how do you eat a whale? And the answer is, one bite at a time. In other words, if I asked you if you could eat a whale you would say, no way, it's too big. That's because you imagine yourself devouring it all at one sitting. But if you took enough time, six months or a year, one bite at a time and that whale would be gone. The same is true for any goals you have related to your passion. Forget that you can't see a path to that big goal. Just do the exercise and fan the ember daily and eventually you will see clearly your very first step. And then take that step. Your first steps will probably be slow small ones. And these are the best because if you take a big leap at this stage you may fall into the trap of chasing things again and that would be a big mistake. 24 Fanning the Ember By imagining your passion on a daily basis your first step will eventually become clear to you. It might be as simple as reading or learning more about your passion, practicing it, sharing it with others, talking to someone who has done it volunteering your time or a dozen other steps that may be right for you. Don't worry about trying to make money with your passion at this stage just focus on doing it for the sheer joy of it. I cannot stress enough how powerful it is to do this exercise. By doing this daily you are giving your ember the oxygen it needs to glow brightly. The more you do this the more your passion, energy and ideas will flow. Eventually you will see clearly what your next step should be. There will be no doubts in your mind. This will come from within and not as a result of you chasing something. This is the kind of inspired action that has clarity and the incredible power and energy of enthusiasm behind it. Fanning the timber and causing it to glow is like carrying around an inner lantern. You may not be able to see that far off goal. It is still too far away and the path is too dark but the lantern allows you to see clearly all around you and you can see clearly your very first step. And when you take that step you carry that lantern with you and now you can see your next step and then the next and the next. And you take those steps and before you know it you are on the path that you have been searching for. This is the process. As long as you have identified your passion and consistently give it your thought and attention this process will not fail. But I don't want you to stop there. Just like fanning an ember, your passion will only glow so bright. In order for it to burst into flames it needs something else. It needs fuel. You fan the ember so it glows and then you add kindling or kerosene and eventually it bursts into flames. And then the more fuel it gets and the more oxygen it gets the more intense the flame. In the next chapter one will explain how to add fuel to your ember, your passion. 
and that combined with the oxygen you have been giving it will cause it to eventually produce a blazing inferno of passion that will produce so much energy and clarity that will propel you to success and make you unstoppable. Chapter 7. Adding the Fuel. Developing the power of belief. Fanning an ember will only do so much for it. It will glow brighter but it will eventually require fuel to burst into flames. The fuel that you need to create those flames is belief. Belief is a stumbling block for most people. And you can't fake belief. You can't make believe you believe. It doesn't work. You either believed or you don't. I can use affirmations all day long but if I don't believe them they are useless. I could repeat a hundred times a day, I have a million dollars in my bank account, I have a million dollars in my bank account. And at the end of the day my mind is going to remind me of the truth, no you don't. And I will know that it is right. What typically happens is that once we identify our passion a big goal formulates in our mind. But since our conscious mind can't find a connection between where we are now and the accomplishment of that goal we get frustrated. All we see are the limitations. We then start trying to force a solution. We start chasing our goal. This is being outwardly directed. We then end up going down the wrong path, get frustrated, get discouraged and eventually give up. Then all you friends and family say, see I told you so. You then give up on your dreams and go on living a life of quiet desperation. It doesn't have to be this way. We've spent our entire lives up until now judging our world by the information gathered by the conscious mind and believing in its limitations. We see people struggling, we see failed businesses, we look at our previous failed attempts or struggles and our conscious mind translates that into doubts and worries and fear. But I will bet you that all your failed attempts and all the struggles you have witnessed were because you and others were chasing something and not following your passion, not using your imagination and not being inwardly inspired to action. And that makes all the difference in the world. Ignore your doubts for now. Shakespeare said it best. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. 26 Fanning the Ember and unfortunately, our friends, our families and most of society reinforce these limitations so much that we no longer believe the truth. And the truth is that as long as you are aligned with your passion and your purpose there are absolutely no limits to your potential. None. That is the truth. Not what your conscious mind leads you to believe. So if we can't fake belief, what do we do? There are several things that you can do to increase your belief and add more fuel to your ember. First, simply doing the exercise I suggested earlier of fanning the ember by giving your thought and attention to your passion on a daily basis will help. Remember, what you're giving your attention to expands in your consciousness. Because as you do that ideas will start to flow as well as increased excitement for what you want to do and eventually you will be able to see clearly your very next step. This alone will give you increased confidence and will increase your belief in what is possible. As you continue to take those inspired small steps your confidence and your belief will grow. The second thing you can do to increase your belief is to affirm the truth regardless of outward appearances. Outward appearances are simply the information that is gathered by your conscious mind. Remember. This information is limited but your mind doesn't know that it is limited so it makes a lot of wrong assumptions. So if your mind sees a lot of people unemployed your conscious mind assumes that it will be difficult for you to get the job that you want. But the truth is that there are people who are thriving despite the economic environment. You will see all the people who have started a business and failed and your mind will tell you it's too difficult to run a successful business. But the truth is that there are people who are thriving. Those are the truths you need to focus on and I'll bet you the people who are thriving are the ones following their passion. So what are the truths you should be affirming regardless of outward appearances? The truth is that opportunities are unlimited, ideas are unlimited, creativity is unlimited, abundance is unlimited, your potential is unlimited dot 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 as long as you are aligned with your passion. Those are the truths you should be affirming every day.
The third thing you can do to increase your belief in your unlimited potential is to read and study about truly successful people. Because in the story of their lives is the proof that people have unlimited potential. You will notice that these people all have things in common. They were following their passion and they believed in themselves. But you will also see that many of 27 fanning the ember. Them also had doubts that they had to overcome. Other people said they couldn't do it. All the things that you will probably face in your quest to discover your purpose and your passion. But they persisted and also most of them said that as a result, what they accomplished was beyond their wildest dreams. Read these stories and be inspired to imagine your own dreams being fulfilled. While we are on the topic of belief I want to caution you about sharing your dreams and goals with others. Because no matter how much your family and friends love you they probably see the world the way most people do and they will be happy to tell you all the reasons you can't accomplish your goals. They will see nothing but the illusions of limitations. They will tell you that you do not have enough money, time, knowledge, experience, support, etc., etc., to do what you want to do. You will just get frustrated trying to tell them otherwise because they will offer up proof. They will give you example after example of all the people who have tried and failed and all the people who are struggling as a result of their foolish efforts and they will remind you of all the things that you tried and failed at in the past. And then they will give you my favorite illogical line of all time, you have to be realistic. I love that one. Whose reality are they talking about? Their false reality that they just described? What they don't understand is that we create our own reality and we do it with the power of our imagination. We imagine where we want to go and if it is aligned with our passions it will take us there. Regardless of outward appearances. If you have doubts about this start reading stories of successful people and you will see the truth in this. History is filled with stories of people who were told that they couldn't achieve something but did it anyway. Unless you can find friends who are like-minded you are better off not talking to others about your plans. Let what you do and what you become speak for you. I have another sign hanging in my office that says, when setting out on a journey, never heed advice from someone who has never left home. Makes sense? If someone tells you that you can't do something ask yourself, what great things has this person accomplished? And if the answer is nothing. Why should their opinion carry any weight? If you want to talk with someone about your dreams and your goals, talk to someone who has been where you want to go. They will never tell you something is impossible. They will give you encouragement and maybe even a few good ideas. 28 Fanning the Ember All of this takes practice and persistence. You imagine engaging in your passion, you imagine how it makes you feel, how it will change your life how it will impact others. You image all the possibilities. As you feel your passion and energy growing your belief will grow along with it. Keep reminding yourself that your current situation is just temporary. Do not try to force too big of a leap. In fact do not try and force anything at all. Learn to listen to your intuition. Consistently fan the timber, give it your thought and attention, and eventually the next step will present itself. Let it be alright to be just a small step. Don't try and rush it. Then keep using your imagination until the next step becomes clear. And then continue on that path. The more you do this the clearer your path will become. That fog you were surrounding yourself with will eventually begin to lift. Eventually your future will become so clear that there will be no doubt in your mind that you are headed in the right direction. You will be filled with excitement and enthusiasm and belief will no longer be an issue for you. You will then know without a doubt the truth, your potential for following your passion is unlimited. Dream big dreams that are aligned with your passion and your subconscious mind will eventually show you the way. An incredibly exciting journey awaits you on this path. Chapter 8. Money, Money, Money. Why I saved this chapter for near the end. Up until now I haven't really talked much about money or income. It's for a very good reason. I didn't want that to be a focus for anyone. The more you chase money the more elusive it becomes. 
Everyone wants more money. Most people do not have enough of it to be able to live life the way they want. Books, seminars, business schemes, wealth infomercials are all very popular and never seem to end. During my own struggling days I responded to some of these in my own search for riches. Of course it never happened. That is because I didn't understand the inner work that was needed to be done and was chasing success, and paid a heavy price. I still see these get rich seminars and infomercials offered on television and on the internet. People will continue to buy these in a desperate attempt to solve their financial woes. I hope you realize by now that this is the wrong approach. This is why I haven't written much about making money. That shouldn't be your goal. Relentlessly do the inner work that I have been writing about. Because once you identify your passion and match it with your skills, talents and strengths and figure out the best way to share your passion with the world, the way to create income will become apparent to you. It will flow naturally without any struggle. If you are following your passion abundance will show up as a result. But as soon as you try forcing it you shut off the flow and then earning money becomes a struggle, like it is for most people. You also have to be open to receiving this abundance. If you believe money is evil, or poverty is soundly, or it's wrong to be wealthy you will never have abundance in your life. Money is not evil. That idea stems from the fact that so many people have chased after money. They have lied, cheated, stolen and even killed to get money. Those things are evil. If you do those things to get rich, yes, that is evil. It is not the money itself or even wanting to enjoy an abundant life. 30 Fanning the Ember Money gives you freedom. Freedom to enjoy this gift of life, to create great memories for you and your family to use your abundance to help others. Consider Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft. He became wealthy because he followed his passion and created a company that contributed immensely to people's lives. His products served others. His company employed others. His company even created great wealth for many people. Now he has formed the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that donates billions, that's billions with a B of dollars to aid in the health and education of children in poverty-stricken areas of the world. This is making an enormous difference in the lives of others. There is nothing remotely evil about this. It's not the money. It's the chasing after it and sacrificing ethics and morality that are wrong. Stop chasing wealth. Do the inner work. Find that ember. Fan it and fuel it until it bursts into flames and creates such a burning desire within you that propels you to success. You will not only attract abundance into your life but you will change the world with your unique gifts that only you can provide once you are living your true self. Your purpose and vision for your future will be clear and you will be living a life of joy, purpose and abundance. The life you were meant to live. Learn to start your own profitable online business based on your passion. Download my free 50-page guide and step-by-step -step video at http colon slash slash www.ronsfreeguide.com Chapter 9 Dealing with Speed Bumps Help Staying on the Path Throughout this book I have laid out a plan to help put you on a path to discover your passion and your purpose. A path that would also lead to a life of joy and abundance. Although the plan sounds simple the execution of it is not. Our minds have been conditioned over the years to accept and believe as the truth the wrong assumptions presented by our conscious mind. So it may not be an easy process to look at your world and your future with new eyes. To be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Looking within, using your imagination trusting your intuition, and believing in your unlimited potential all takes work. But I assure you, if you have a strong desire to live a life of joy and purpose and you are persistent in doing the work that I suggest you will be successful. It will change your life. I would like to give you some advice for overcoming some of the speed bumps mental obstacles, that you may run into. These come from first hand experience. No matter what the outward appearances, make no mistake about this, 
The real obstacles are mental obstacles. They can be overcome without anything changing on the outside. In fact, change must take place inwardly first before you see outward results. Before I continue I feel I must talk about something that is extremely important. If you are feeling so overwhelmed by your current situation that you find it difficult to function or it is affecting your sleep or your health, please do not hesitate to seek medical or professional help or guidance. Even though this is a mental battle you may need the assistance of a professional to allow you to function on a day-to-day -day basis before you can even begin doing the inner work I am suggesting. I have been there also. Probably the biggest challenge for me was to consistently try and visualize things as I wanted them to be and not be fixated with the way things were at. 32 Fanning the Ember The Present This was a huge challenge and occasionally still is. When you have to get up every morning and go to a job you despise, one that sucks the life right out of you it can be hard to stay focused on that tiny ember inside and have faith that it will grow in strength and eventually give you the ideas and the energy to move past your current situation. Be persistent and eventually it will happen. I have been there. If you feel like you are buried in debt. And each trip to the mailbox causes anxiety because you fear that another overdue notice is waiting for you. Or you have stopped answering your telephone because you know it is another bill collector hounding you. It may seem like there is no way out. Trust me, I have been the two. All that is happening is that your conscious mind can't figure a way out. But just because you can't see a solution doesn't mean there is not one there. I know how difficult it can be to maintain faith that things will change when your mind is clouded by stress and worry. But things can change and they will change if you remain persistent with the exercises I have talked about. And probably sooner than you may expect. You need to constantly remind yourself that your current situation is temporary and has absolutely nothing to do with your future. You will be creating your future by identifying your passion and then imagining as vividly as possible the joy you feel as you are engaged in your passion. You have to constantly remind yourself of the truth. The truth is, that once you are aligned with your passion, ideas are unlimited, opportunities are unlimited, abundance is unlimited, your potential is unlimited. Those are the truths. Put some affirmations together that can help you stay focused on these truths as much as possible. Feed your mind with inspirational books and articles. Read about the successes of others knowing that someday soon this will be you. Find a way to use your passion immediately to help others. Listen to music that moves you. Watch television that makes you laugh. Watch a movie that you can escape into. Do whatever you can to keep from staying fixated on your current temporary situation. Staying fixated, constant worry, not only affects your health but keeps you blocked from receiving new ideas, noticing new opportunities, and your flow of energy. Another technique that I found very helpful for avoiding the mental quicksand that I was in was to live with a grateful heart. Gratitude is incredibly powerful. It opens up those blocked channels better than anyone. 33 Fanning the Ember Process If you are constantly complaining and griping about your current situation it will be very difficult to move beyond where you are right now. Remember, what you give your thought and attention to expands in your consciousness. You do not want those negatives you are now experiencing to expand in your consciousness. If you are clogged up with resentment or anger it will block the flow of energy and ideas that you need to move past where you are now. No matter how bad you believe your job or your situation to be it is imperative to find things to be thankful for right now. Look for the positives around you no matter how small or insignificant they may seem. As often as possible throughout your day read over these blessings and give thanks for them. Be mindful of any negative self-talk. Instead focus on the positives and use your affirmations. Don't get sucked into negative conversations with others. There are many people who are dissatisfied with their lot and love to complain. Try and avoid these people or at least excuse yourself as tactfully as possible from these conversations. 
If someone comments on your dire current situation just brush it off with a comment such as, I'm not worried, that situation will be changing soon. And that is the truth. Stay focused on your blessings. I am sure if you give it enough thought there are many. Along those same lines you must learn how to forgive. Feeling resentment towards someone will also block the flow of the ideas and energy you need to move beyond your current situation. No matter how justified you feel your resentment is if you are not able to release those feelings you only hurt yourself. You forgive someone not because they deserve it but because you do. Try and think of it this way. Whatever someone did to you it was because of their flaws, weaknesses, fears or insecurities that they would treat someone badly. These weaknesses are going to continue to hold them back and negatively impact their lives as a result. It will keep them from finding their passion and experiencing joy in their lives. If anything you should feel sorry for these people. If you understand this and forgive them you instantly rise above them and unblock those negatives from your own life. Your life experience is way too valuable to have it any other way. Forgive them because you deserve it. If you can learn to forgive others and mentally bless them despite their actions you will take a huge leap on your path to true success. 34 Fanning the Ember Don't forget, forgiveness also applies to you. If you feel you made mistakes or wronged others in the past do your best to make amends and forgive yourself even if others do not have the inner strength to forgive you. If you feel that the stupid mistakes you made in the past are responsible for your current troubles chalk it up to a learning experience because that's what it is. We have all made them. If we allow them to they will strengthen us. They give us a new perspective that we probably needed. They help us to grow. No one makes it through life without making mistakes or having regrets. Do you want to make it up to others and yourself for any past mistakes? The best way to do that is to find your passion and your purpose and learn how to use your gifts to serve others. Let your life be an example that will inspire those around you. One of the biggest misperceptions that people have about this process is that they think their current circumstances have to change before they can be happy or start to focus on their passion. That is not true. Nothing has to change outwardly in order for you to start down your path to joy and purpose. In fact it is just the opposite. You must change inwardly first before you see results in the exterior. Don't think, well if only I had a new job, more education, a different relationship, lost weight, etc etc. Then I can get started. The process is a mental one. So you need to start now, grow where you are planted. Constantly do the exercises I explained in previous chapters. Focus on the blessings you have right now, clear your heart of resentment. If you identify and focus on the timber, fan it and fuel it, it will eventually grow and the fog of your current situation will slowly begin to lift and then, in the not too distant future, you will be able to see with great clarity and relief that you are now on the right path. And then, your outward circumstances will begin to change. One day when your life is joyful you will look back and chuckle at how foolish you were to be so stressed about things that could easily have changed because you will be so filled with joy and a deep sense of fulfillment as you flow through the days that the struggles of your past will merely be an afterthought. Chapter 10 The world needs your greatness. Closing thoughts. A new way of looking at things can sometimes seem confusing or complex. I have tried as best I could to keep it clear and simple in the hopes for this to be as helpful as possible. Now that my life has changed and the fog has lifted for me I want to help others do the same. It pains me to see others struggle when I know that it is not necessary. I do not believe there is anything more important than that each person on this planet discover their purpose and their passion. Imagine what an incredible world this would be indeed. Because if you are living a life of joy and abundance you have no thoughts of doing wrong to others. Just the opposite is true. What you have to offer serves others and make this world a better place. The world needs your greatness. Because when you become someone who has found their passion and their purpose you become someone who inspires others, or you lead others, or heal others, or employ others, 
or teach others. You become the rising tide of humanity and as the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. The world needs your greatness. I began this book with a quote by Henry David Thoreau and I will finish with one also. If you go confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. My greatest wish for each of you is to find your passion and your purpose so that you may live a life of joy and abundance. The life you were meant to live. Ron Schaefer. Note to readers. I hope you enjoyed this digital version of my paperback book, Fanning the Ember. If you did, I am going to ask you to do two favors for me. First, do not hesitate to pass this ebook on to others. Second, go to my Amazon page and let others know that you enjoyed the book by leaving a review. I would greatly appreciate it. Go to http colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash fanning the ember slash dp slash 11051638737 slash ref equals s r underscore one underscore two question s equals books and i e equals u t f eight and kid equals one three three o four three six nine two zero and s r equals one to two thank you ron Quotes for inspiration and affirmations. Limitations only exist in your mind. Affirm the truth regardless of outward circumstances. And the truth is that ideas are unlimited, opportunities are unlimited, abundance is unlimited. You have unlimited potential as long as you are aligned with your passion Ron Schaefer. Discover which way your heart draws you and choose that way with all your strength author unknown. Each one of us has a fire in our heart for something. It's our goal in life to find it and to keep it lit. Mary Lou Retton, Olympic gymnast. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. William Shakespeare. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Albert Einstein. Nurture your mind with great thoughts, for you will never go any higher than you think Benjamin Disraeli. If we all did things we are capable of doing we would literally astound ourselves. Thomas Edison. Joy comes from using our potential. Will Schultz. Believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Believe that you might be that light for someone else. Kobe Imada. Obstacles cannot crush me. Every obstacle yields to stern resolve. He who is fixed to a star does not change his mind. Leonardo da Vinci. You are a child of the universe. You were born to manifest the glory of the universe that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. This quote has been attributed to both Marianne Williamson and Nelson Mandela. Twenty years from now you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bowlins. Sail away from the safe harbor. Catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore. Dream. Discover. Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens. The greatest revolution of our generation is the discovery that human beings, by changing the inner attitudes of their minds can change the outer aspects of their lives. William James. A piece of the miracle process has been reserved for each of us. Jim Ron. Man is so made that whenever anything fires his soul, impossibilities vanish. Jean de La Fontaine. All dreams come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Walt Disney. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt. Whatever you can do, or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness is genius, power, and magic in it Goethe. If he is to be ultimately at peace with himself, what a man can be, he must be. Abraham Maslow. None of us will ever accomplish anything excellent or commanding except when he listens to this whisper which is heard by him alone. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Within you right now is the power to do things you never dreamed possible. This power becomes available to you just as soon as you can change your beliefs. Maxwell Maltz. God can dream a bigger dream for you than you can dream for yourself.
and your role on earth is to attach yourself to that divine force and let yourself be released to it. Oprah Winfrey. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Steve Jobs, co-founder Apple, Incorporated. If you go confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours Henry David Thoreau. Here are some more of my favorite quotes. Motivational quotes. A man's true delight is to do the things he was made for. Dilda Marcus Aurelius Are you willing to let go of the life you have planned so as to have the life that is waiting for you? The one thing all famous authors, world-class athletes, business tycoons, singers, actors and celebrated achievers in any field have in common is that they all began their journeys when they were none of these. Everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Dash Albert Einstein. Mike Dooley. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not, unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not, the world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan press on has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Calvin Coolidge, 1872 1933, 30th President. Or, how about Leonardo da Vinci, he who wishes to be rich in a day will be hanged in a year. There is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action, and because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good. It is nor how valuable nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. Martha Graham, quoted by Agnes de Mille in Martha, The Life and Work of Martha Graham. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness concerning all acts of initiative and creation. There is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen events, meetings and material assistance which no one could have dreamed would have come their way. I have learned a deep respect for one of Goethe's couplets, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power and magic in it. Begin it now. Dilda W. H. Murray. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify, or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world, are the ones who do. Apple. If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Meister Eckhart. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. Dash John C. Maxwell. I used to wait around and hope somebody would give me a big opportunity. I used to think that was what I needed. So that I could show what I could do. I used to think that way. 
Those were the days before the mind shifts started. Those were the days when I thought thoughts like these, when someone gives me the right opportunity, watch me. When I get the right job, I'll be happy. When I segue into a proper career that's my true calling, then I'll be able to display my true talent the real me. Then one day my mind shifted to this, you can display the real you right now. You can have it be in every encounter. You can light up even the smallest task with enthusiastic creativity if you want to. That's the whole meaning of shifting the mind. There can be light in every word. That shift in my mind was from a falsely projected, hopefully better, future, to the perfect now. There would be others. Steve Chandler www.stevechandler.com Asking is the beginning of receiving. Make sure you don't go to the ocean with a teaspoon. At least take a bucket so the kids won't laugh at you. Jim Ron. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive, and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Dash Howard Thurman. Our competitive advantage is that we make a promise and we keep it. Warren Buffett. During these seductive times, it's helpful to remember a statement Buffett made back in 1991, taken from a video that's played at the shareholder meeting every year. After they first obey all rules, I then want employees to ask themselves whether they are willing to have any contemplated act appear the next day on the front page of their local paper, to be read by their spouses, children, and friends, with the reporting done by an informed and critical reporter. If they follow this test, they need not fear my other message to them, lose money for the firm, and die. Will be understanding, lose a shred of reputation for the firm, and I will be ruthless. If I have the belief that I can do it, I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it even if I may not have it at the beginning. Mahatma Gandhi what this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists. And it becomes available only when you are in that state of mind in which you know exactly what you want. And are fully determined not to quit until you get it. Alexander Graham Bell and may we never forget William James' wisdom that, the small choices bear us irresistibly toward our destiny. In the short run, there are two types of people who live in darkness, Ron, those who are desperate to emerge and those who are desperate to stay. When you finally realize that part of the reason you chose this lifetime was to shine your light for the first type, you'll stop worrying about what the second type thinks of you. Shine your little heart out the universe. If your dominant intent is to feel joy while you are doing the work, your triad of intentions freedom, growth and joy will come quickly and easily into alignment. See your career as one of creating a joyful life experience. You are not a creator of things or a regurgitator of what someone else has created or a gatherer of stuff. You are a creator, and the subject of your creation is your joyful life experience. That is your mission. That is your quest. That is why you are here. Abraham. Most people never run far enough on their first wind to find out they've got a second. Give your dreams all you've got and you'll be amazed at the energy that comes out of you. William James a great trick of every enlightened master, Ron, is being ever mindful that it's not what you do that brings about a miracle, but that you do it. Doing something, almost anything in the direction of your dreams, every day, is all I need to reach you, connect the dots, and drop a few jaws. You reach for the fruit, and I will shake the tree. We talk in over, the universe. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice and most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Steve Jobs, 1955 to 2011, there was a time in the life of every hero, champion, master, and tycoon, Ron, when they said to themselves, I will not wait any longer. 
and no matter how near or far away their dream then seemed, they began to take action, every day, no matter what. No matter what, the universe. The successful warrior is the average man, with laser-like focus. Bruce Lee, the father of mixed martial arts. By Brian Johnson. Never let a dollar come in or go out of your hands without gratitude. Thank whoever gave you the money and whoever gave you the services or products you're paying for. Honor the exchange. Think about how many people you're supporting as you circulate energy in the form of money. Make it a spiritual practice. Formal education will make you a living, self-education will make you a fortune. Jim Ron, American entrepreneur, author and motivational speaker. I don't want an epitaph on my gravestone that says, he would have pursued some big dreams in his life, but he wanted to wait until the time was just right. Tom Peters. If not, and if the reason you give why you're not is that you're too busy, know that saying you're too busy to check in with your highest self is kinda like saying you're too busy driving to stop for gas. Brian Johnson. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness is genius, power, and magic in it. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, 1749 to 1832, philosopher, scientist, author. Someone once asked Somerset Maugham if he wrote on a schedule or only when struck by inspiration. I write only when inspiration strikes, he replied. Fortunately it strikes every morning at 9 o'clock sharp. Stephen Pressfield from the War of Art. As Pressfield says, Maugham reckoned another deeper truth, that by performing the mundane act of sitting down and starting to work, he set in motion a mysterious but infallible sequence of events that would produce inspiration, as surely as if the goddess had synchronized her watch with his. How about you? My comment, inspiration strikes after you take action to get it started. Same with all cooperative components slash coincidence. You can cause it to happen by taking action. You wait for inspiration to strike or have you slash are you training her to show up at a certain time? P.S. Check out Elizabeth Gilbert's great TED talk on exactly this. The unexamined life is not worth living. Plato. The secret of genius is focus. By Brian Johnson. The secret of genius is focus. If you can laser your attention on any subject or project, it will reveal its blueprint to you. George Washington Carver discovered 325 uses for the peanut and 100 for the sweet potato. Great geniuses are powerful focusers. Many have been called eccentric or insane because they put aside worldly concerns for the sake of their music, art, architecture, drama, inventing, or writing. But they are the individuals who change the world, while those with scattered attention wade through mediocre lives. Geniuses don't fritter their precious minds on mass trends. They create the trends that altered the masses. Alan Coyne from Why Your Life Sucks. Focus. 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 In short, quit trying to magically manifest stuff and focus on affecting people's lives positively. The greater the number positively affected, the greater the financial return. M. J. DeMarco from The Millionaire Fast Lane. All you need is to know what you want, and to want it badly enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. Wallace Wattles, American author. If it's not yet obvious to you, the real reason for this, and all seasons, is you, Ron. A more perfect child of the universe has never lived. Until now, only celebrations cloaked in myth and mystery could hint at your divine heritage and sacred destiny. You are life's prayer of becoming and its answer. The first light at the dawn of eternity, drawn from the ether, so that I might know my own depth, discover new heights, and revel in seas of blessed emotion. A pioneer into illusion, an adventurer into the unknown, and a lifter of veils. Courageous, heroic and exalted by legions in the unseen. To give beyond reason, to care beyond hope, to love without limit, to reach, stretch, and dream, in spite of your fears.
These are the hallmarks of divinity, traits of the immortal, your badges of honor. May you wear them with a pride as great as what we feel for you. Your light has illuminated darkened paths, your gaze has lifted broken spirits, and already your life has changed the course of history. This is the time of year we celebrate Ron Schaefer. Buying me for greatness, the universe. Adversity has the effect of eliciting talents, which in prosperous circumstances would have lain dormant. Horace, 6528. What is the highest vision for my life? What seeks to emerge in, through, and as my life? Or, in the case of a project or business, what is the highest vision for this project or for this business? What must I become in order to manifest this vision? What qualities must I cultivate? What must I release to manifest this vision? This may include habits, mindsets, compulsive behaviors things of that nature. What talents, gifts, skills, and qualities do I already possess that will serve this vision? This moves you into a state of being and having, rather than trying to get something. Michael Bernard Beckwith from Life Visioning. Powerful. Take up one idea. Make that one idea your life, dream of it, think of it, live on that idea. Let the brain, the body, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea, and just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to success, and this is the way great spiritual giants are produced. Dash Swami Vivekananda. Joseph Campbell said it well, we must let go of the life we have planned, so as to accept the one that is waiting for us. Follow your bliss and the universe will open doors for you where there were only walls. Joseph Campbell if I had to live my life over again, I'd make the same mistakes, only sooner. Delula Bankhead. The first step toward success is taken when you refuse to be a captive of the environment in which you first find yourself. Mark Cain. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Robert Frost, 1874 to 1963, Poet. Next time you're in the planet Hollywood in New York City, check out the letter hanging on the wall that Bruce Lee wrote to himself. It's stamped secret and is dated January 9, 1970. By 1980 I will be the best known oriental movie star in the United States and will have secured 10 million dollars dollars. He continues with, and in return I will give the very best acting I could possibly give every single time I am in front of the camera and I will live in peace and harmony. Wow! Written any good letters to yourself lately? Jim Carrey did the same thing as Bruce Lee. He put a check for $10 million in his wallet. Most dreams die on the tyranny of how? The how will show up when you get clear on what you want. Focus first on what you want without regard to how you will make it happen. People always act on the basis of what they believe. If you want to change their actions, or your own, you have to change their beliefs. Dash Tony Robbins. I haven't a clue how my story will end but that's all right. When you set out on a journey and night covers the road, that's when you discover the stars. Nancy Willard, born 1936, children's author, poet, and novelist. Do not let the hero in your soul perish in lonely frustration for the life you deserved and have never been able to reach. The world you desire can be one. It exists. It is real. It is possible. It's yours. Ayn Rand, 1905 to 1982, writer, philosopher. The goal should not be to make money or acquire things, but to achieve the consciousness through which the substance will flow forth when and as you need it. Eric Butterworth from Spiritual Economics. Although ardent fans of the law of attraction will tell you that you must not be doing it right if you haven't manifested a yacht since you started practicing visualizing last weekend, DeMarco goes off on the silliness of how the so-called law is marketed. He proposes that the true path to success is the law of affection and tells us, affection of scale or magnitude always precedes money, either directly or indirectly. 
The more lives you impact, directly or indirectly, the more wealth you will attract. In short, quit trying to magically manifest stuff and focus on affecting people's lives positively. The greater the number positively affected, the greater the financial return. It's a law. MJ Marco from the Fast Lane Millionaire Ron, it's because intelligence, looks, even creativity, come in a distant second place to believing. Achievers achieve because they believed they would, and so the heavens and earth were moved. I believe in you, the universe some feel that fear is okay as a lifestyle because they've heard that the meek shall inherit the earth. So they can go on with being meek as a way of life. They become soft spoken and compliant, never standing for themselves, always resigned to being a fluffy doormat. But scholars now say that in the scriptural texts that were translated from the Greek, the word pros doesn't exactly mean meek as people have always thought. In fact, it is more accurate to say it means disciplined. A very big difference in those translations. It's much more encouraging to now realize that the discipline shall inherit the earth. Tilda Steve Chandler Ron, can you imagine someone waiting for a rosebud, yearning to smell its heavenly fragrance and eager to see its impossible beauty, yet becoming so focused and impatient for its impending bloom that they become blind to all the others that already have? It happens, the universe. Serve. Reminds me of one of my absolute favorite passages from Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, again and again I therefore admonish my students in Europe and America, don't aim at success, the more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued, it must ensue, and it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success, you have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see that in the long run, in the long run, I say. Dash success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. This all reminds me of some Vernon Howard mojo in The Power of Your Super Mind, where he tells us, do not be impatient with your seemingly slow progress. Do not try to run faster than you presently can. If you are studying, reflecting and trying, you are making progress whether you are aware of it or not. A traveler walking the road in the darkness of night is still going forward. Someday, some way, everything will break open, like the natural unfolding of a rosebud. Howard also tells us, it is a mistake for anyone to think he has lived too long in his old, unsatisfactory ways to make the great change. If you switch on the light in a dark room, it makes no difference how long it was dark because the light will still shine. Be teachable. That is the whole secret. The moment of enlightenment is when a person's dreams of possibilities become images of probabilities. Vic Braden, American tennis player, instructor and television broadcaster for the sport. The fact is, for myself, I know that if I believe strongly enough, and have enough confidence in myself to learn what I need, then there are very few things that I could not accomplish in a rather short period of time. Once you know you can do it, and act that way, the means will be obvious. Acting as if you were what you want to become and know you can become is the way to remove self-doubt and enter your real magic kingdom. Where and I from real magic? Let others lead small lives, but not you. Let others argue over small things, but not you. Let others cry over small hurts, but not you. Let others leave their future in someone else's hands, but not you. Jim Ron, American entrepreneur, author and motivational speaker. Live your dreams now, Ron, to any degree that you can. With every purchase. Every decision. Every hello and goodbye. Every assignment. Every conversation. Every meal. Every morning, afternoon, and evening. And never, ever. Ever look back.
reframe every thought, word, and deed from the perspective of the person you've always dreamed you'd be, as if your life was already as you've always dreamed it would be. Die to yesterday's illusions and be reborn to the truth of your vision. And let's just see if you can handle the torrent of treasures I send your way. Your greatest admirer, biggest fan, and truest friend, the universe. All of this is already in you. The great use it. The non-great do not, so they remain the non-great. Decide upon something, situation, or condition that you want right now in your present life. Be definite in this decision. Do not limit your decision by investigating the probable reasons why it will never happen. That is the detour to nothing. All false speculations of defeat have to be ruled out of your consciousness. If they enter into the decision for even a fleeting moment, the decision is robbed of authority and the subconscious mind cannot act upon it. You do not need to know how the final result will come to pass. That is the function of the subconscious. It has ways and means that, if they were known, would stagger the intellect. Raymond Charles Barker from The Power of Decision There is no better way to earn money than to do the things that you love to do. Money can flow into your experience through endless avenues. It is not the choice of the craft that limits the money that flows but only your attitude toward money. Abraham. This is the true joy in life. The being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I live it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me, it is a sort of splendid torch which I have got hold of for the moment, and want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. George Bernard Shaw. I like the way Tony Robbins put it. He said, most dreams die on the tyranny of how? The how will show up when you get clear on what you want. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Tilda Thomas Jefferson. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Chinese proverb. The universe does not know whether the vibration that you're offering is because of something you're observing or something you're remembering or something that you are imagining. It just receives the vibration and answers it with things that match it. Abraham. What better way could anyone spend money than back into the economy which gives more people work? What you call your economy is the exchange of human energy. And so, think back a few hundred years about what your economy was in this nation. And what has changed? Do more resources been trucked in from other planets? Or have more people, over more time, just identified more things that they desire, and the non-physical energy that is endless and infinite supplies that? We never hear any of you say, well, I have been well for so many years, that I've decided that I'm going to be sick for a while to allow some other people to be well. Because you know that whether you're well or not doesn't have anything to do with them not getting enough wellness. You're not using up the wellness and depriving them of it. And it is the same thing with the abundance. People that have managed to find vibrational harmony with abundance, so that it is flowing to them and through them, are not depriving anyone else of that abundance. Abraham. Ron, would there be any point in giving you the gift of imagination, the freedom to think as you choose, and dreams that set your soul on fire if even a single one of them couldn't come true? I think not. I love you too, too much. Tally ho, the universe. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela. South African anti-apartheid revolutionary, politician and philanthropist live for something. Do good, and leave behind you a monument of virtue that the storms of time can never destroy.
Write your name in kindness, love, and mercy on the hearts of thousands you come in contact with year by year, and you will never be forgotten. Your name and your good deeds will shine as stars in heaven. Thomas Chalmers your most precious, valued possessions and your greatest powers are invisible and intangible. No one can take them. You, and you alone, can give them. You will receive abundance for your giving. W. Clement Stone. Respond to every call that excites your spirit, Rumi. So what if the motion has to be forced? The important thing is to do it. Do it now, and the feeling will come. There is a great deal of psychological evidence showing that attitude change often follows behavior change. Good intentions are often crushed by old habits. If we stand around waiting for a feeling to move us, we may never get going. Get a person to perform a behavior, and, with some exceptions, their feelings will fall in line. Robert Emmons from Thanks. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Martin Luther King, Jr., American pastor, activist, humanitarian, and leader in the African American Civil Rights Movement. You cannot get poor enough to help poor people thrive or sick enough to help sick people get well. You only ever uplift from your position of strength and clarity and alignment. Abraham. P.S. That Robert Kennedy quote is worth a reread. Each time a man stands up for an ideal, or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope, and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. To be given a chance to create, is the meat and potatoes of life. The money is the gravy. Bette Davis, American actress of film, television and theater. Build your own dreams, or someone else will hire you to build theirs. Faragree. Some say that you should not want money at all because the desire for money is materialistic and not spiritual. But we want you to remember that you are here in this very physical world where spirit has materialized. You cannot separate yourself from the aspect of yourself that is spiritual, and while you are here in these bodies, you cannot separate yourselves from that which is physical or material. All of the magnificent things of a physical nature that are surrounding you are spiritual in nature. Abraham. Don't be pushed by your problems, be led by your dreams. Ralph Waldo Emerson. There are two great days in a person's life the day we are born and the day we discover why. William Barclay. F-O-C-U-S. Follow one course until successful. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of spirituality. Searching and learning is where the miracle process all begins. Jim Ron. Sometimes good things fall apart, so better things can fall together. Jessica Howell. Regret is what you should fear the most. If something is going to keep you awake at night, let it be the fear of not following your dream. Dash Chris Gibbo.